Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mountain View Baptist Church here at the 3 p.m. service on June the 21st of 2020. Happy Father's Day once again, and happy Mother's Day, belated Mother's Day. Man, good to have you here. Robert is going to come, open us up in a word of prayer, and then lead us in song. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you. We're grateful to be in your house. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to meet as a family on this great day. We thank you for all the fathers who are present here. Lord, the sacrifices that they've made. Um, Lord, the guidance that you've given them to lead their families in the way that they ought to go. To come to church, to be faithful members. Lord, we're so grateful for the foundation that you've given us. We pray that tonight that you would get all the glory and the honor. And Lord, that you would just work in a great way. We ask this in your name. Amen. Number 323 in your hymnals. 323, three, once you find your place, it's standing on the promises. So let's stand and sing out together on the first verse. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal
everybody here with us. Did anybody not get one of the missionary uh, prayer sheets there on Thursday night? Did somebody not get one of those? They're all gone? Okay. And uh, here's one if somebody didn't get one. Uh, Brother Dean, you got a couple cards there. Did anybody not get a Father's Day card? Father's Day card. Anybody not get a Mother's Day card? You still got two back there, Dean? Yeah. All right, we need to get those out. And uh, we will have a competition here to see who gets one of those. We'll give one to fathers and one to mothers. Mothers will go first. We're going to have an arm wrestling match to see. You know, we'll have playoffs and things like that. No, let's see. How do we do this? Who has the most children? Who has the most children? Miss Rosario, you have five. Miss Trudy, you have six. You got six. Miss Dominique, you have four. you have four, but you have two more in heaven, so you've got six. So we've still got a tie. We've still got a tie. What's that? Arm wrestling. Miss Trudy, Miss Dominique. All right. <laughs> Let's see. She has a new daughter-in-law, and uh, there are two new daughter-in-laws as well. That's oh. true. Okay, Trudy wins it. That's kind of unfair. That's unfair because Emilio and Antonio and Abraham are not of dating age yet. That's really working. Hey, hurry up. Yeah, we're <laughs> there, She'll have great grandbabies by the time them boys are having children. <laughs> All right, so now we're to the men, to the men. How do we do the men? Because that'd be the same thing. Brother Burping Keener would parties. win right there. Burpee parties. Burpee parties. <laughs> My wife, she's, she's still caught in youth conference. We did pretty good with youth conference. We had Caden put in a good standing there. That's right. Let's see. How many? Where's the most hair? <laughs> you have to specify where, on your chin or on your head? We have to get you up and show you, put you in the camera. There's some people with the newest hair. Let's see. Who is who has the youngest baby? That'd be Brother Antonio. Aww. He didn't What's that? I need some help here. Who had the longest labor? Kobe won. Oh, man. What's that? I had seven kids. Couldn't have done the kid one with that one. Oh. That one. Let's see. How do we figure this out? Y'all got to help me out now. Father that has the most. So that would still be Brother Keener. Soon to be father. Soon to be father. Soon to be father. Right here. It's on me, Four years. You got something you want to confess? Right here. Oh, man. Remember, the camera's rolling. What? Wow. All right, let's see. Oldest child. Oldest child. Brother Ken, that's probably going to be you, isn't it? Okay. Brother Ken wins another card. All right. So remember, Thursday night, 7 p.m., same time there. Uh, just come uh, about 10 minutes ahead of time. And uh, Abraham is famous. Yeah. yeah. Someone remarked about Abraham, and they live all the way on the other side of the country. Oh, no. They have heard Abraham preaching right along with me. And uh, that's what my mom said. Who's that little preacher? Oh, no. <laughs> because this camera and God is picking up. <laughs> He's like, <"Hey>, <laughs> All right, so Robert's going to come. He's going to take some specials. We need to get some specials or uh, requests. That's the word I'm looking for. Who's got a request? And we always have people, different people, asking for requests. Miss Feline, have we taken yes. your request? Uh, no. 272. 272. 272. Sorry. 200 and 272. Oh, I'm on the winning side. Number 272 in your hymnals will remain seated for this song. Once I drifted out in sin, singing out together on the first. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope nor joy within, and my soul was burning down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was wrong.
singing this evening. You may be seated. If you will, turn in your Bibles to uh, the book of Esther. The book of Esther, we're going to look at just a few verses there. The book of Esther in chapter 4. Remember Esther, she's been, if you want to say, elected queen here. And uh, she is uh, Mordecai's uh, niece. And uh, the a proclamation has gone out uh, from uh, Haman, uh, signed by the king, uh, to get all of the Jews uh, exterminated, if you want to say it that way. Genocide was to take place. And so with Esther being the uh, in the palace, uh, Mordecai tells her, said, you're, you're not going to get away from this. And so he's, they're doing some things here. We just want to pick up this dialogue in verse, uh, we'll, we'll look in verse 12. So Esther chapter 4, and let's stand together and we'll look here in verse 12. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. He said, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from some other place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you. And Lord, it may be for such a time as this that Mountain View Baptist Church is gathered here tonight. Lord, we ask that you would speak to us, Lord, that you would strengthen us from your word and any others that may partake of this service through the online ministry. Lord, we pray that we'd be strengthened in the inner man. Pray, Father, that we would draw strength from your word. As we see others that have gone before us go through struggles and trials and as advice is given throughout the scriptures, and Lord, that your, your word lights our path. Help us to stay upon the path that is right and righteous and narrow. Or because there's only one way to heaven, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you would meet the needs that we have, or that you would open our hearts to receive your word. And Father, through these trying times in our lives, Lord, help us to realize that for such a time as this, we get to live for you. What a great blessing it is to know Christ is our Savior. To know that home is our heaven, or heaven is our home. What a great place it'll be. But Lord, for right now, we're still here on earth. And our lives are but a vapor. Please use us to minister to those around us. Lord, use your word to minister to us. Father, I pray you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me an unction from on high. I need your help. It's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray and ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. Now look at those, just in that last of verse 14, and Mordecai tells Esther this, and says, And who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this? And we've been looking at different times and things, and uh, on Thursday night we looked at that, and uh, the different things that we see going on that are signs of the times, and you can see the Lord coming back. And then even this morning as we looked and we saw all these things and we're right here. This is Father's Day. We celebrate uh, being fathers, but we're supposed to be a father. Uh, every day that we've had a child born unto us, we fathered a child, we're supposed to stand into that. We're supposed to live up to that. Mothers are to live up to be uh, the mothers that they're supposed to be. And children, you're supposed to obey your parents. And as Christians, we're supposed to be Christians. And it doesn't matter whether it's a good day or a bad day. It doesn't matter whether it's a sunny day sunny day or a stormy day doesn't doesn't matter if the economy is booming or that we're in recession we're supposed to live for christ and right. we have that hope in christ jesus uh, that we have that we're supposed to endure suffering we're supposed to go through some things that's just how life is whether you're saved or lost you're going to go through some trials you're going to go through some uh struggles you're going to have to endure some things but as a christian uh, we can go through these things and realize there's a greater good and a greater glory to it because we get to bring glory and honor under our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be days when you have either quit or you feel like quitting, but if you don't quit, you get to make it to the next day. Amen. It's when you quit is when you fail. 
If you just think about quitting but you hang on, you've not failed. You just keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep going. Does that make sense? Amen. You're like, well, pastor, that's easier said than done. Exactly right. And that's why God gave us the Bible. It's good. Because sometimes we forget the lessons that He's already taught us and that we've already learned. And when you forget what you've already learned, it's almost like uh, memorizing Scripture. I'm sure everybody in here has memorized Scripture before, right? Is that right? Yeah. Now, can you quote every passage of Scripture that you've memorized previously in your life? Man, when I got done with Bible college, I thought I was going to have a 3 by 5 version of the Bible. It's all written down on cards, just like this. Now, starting to work on Philippians chapter 4. And that's where we're going to be turning here in a little bit. There is so much in Philippians chapter 4. If I would ask you what encouraging passages of Scripture come out of Philippians chapter 4, you'd maybe come up with one or two. But when you start going through that chapter, it's a lot more than one or two that are there. And when you have those kind of things occurring, remember when you start reading the Bible and you start studying the Bible and you see things start showing up, when things are repeated, or a theme is repeated, a name is repeated, a, a phrase is repeated. You ought to pay attention to that because there's some reason. Because what's the key to learning? Repetition, over and over and over and over. So we're supposed to learn those things. But before we turn to that, remember, before you leave this passage of Scripture, for such a time as this. We're the people that get to live in the summer of 2020. Moses is not here. I'll say it this way. Moses ain't here. Paul ain't here, Elijah's not here, uh, uh, Isaiah's not here, me and you are here. And we're the ones that get to represent Christ through all of this. And we're not representing Him to the whole world, we're representing Him to what realm we live in. See, we have our piece of the wall to work on. We're not supposed to work on that part of the wall. We're not supposed to work on that part of the wall. We're supposed to work on the part of the wall right here. So it's your family. It's your home. It's your workplace. It's your street. It's your church. It's your city. It's your state. It's your nation. It's your world. But you'll never reach the world and do what you're supposed to do in the world if you're not right in your own heart and in your own family and on your street, and in your church. Does that make sense? Now, let's go to the Timothy books. 2 Timothy is where we'll start. 2 Timothy. Remember, we looked a few weeks ago at the word suffering coming out of uh, 1 Peter. Now we're looking here in uh, 2 Timothy in chapter 2. 2 Timothy in chapter 2. You're like, Pastor, I thought you were talking about Philippians chapter 4. Oh, we've not gotten there yet, but we'll end up there, okay? So look with me in 2 Timothy. Look in chapter 2. Look in verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Look in verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. Well, I mean, here, here Paul is writing to Timothy. He says, look, I have to endure some things, but I'm doing it for the saved people's sake. I'm doing it for the church. I'm doing it for my family that's saved. I'm doing it for those outside of my family, those outside of the church that are saved. What we do in our church does affect other people, especially now that we have this on and people are seeing part of our church and what we're about. They hear what we sing. They see what see and hear what we preach, and we're affecting them. They're like, well, they can't see me. I'm not in front of the camera, but you're part of this. But you're part of this. This church wouldn't be going on if you weren't here. That camera wouldn't be there recording me if you weren't here. Does that make sense? So you have a part in it. And so we're ministering to people and we have to endure some things. Oh, I've got to stay up through church, stay awake. Okay, if that's all the enduring that you're doing, you're not enduring too much. But you get to do that. You get to show up in the 100 degree heat. You, you get to come to church when the rest of the world gets to go and play. That's really not enduring much. But when you look at it that way, you're like, I get to do it for Christ. I get to do it for Christ. More living a holy life, a godly life. You know, we look at that, oh, that's so terrible. No, you get to endure it. You get to live for God. You'll get a crown one day for that. You're not seeing it now, so that's where it comes in your mind. You're like, I've just got to endure this for this time. 
for such a time as this. Look in uh, chapter 4. 2 Timothy in chapter 4, look in verse 3. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Oh, here's the opposite way of endure. You got people, they just won't endure sound doctrine. They just won't even take the preaching. Man, if you won't take the preaching, you'll never live it. And that's what a lot of them that don't want to endure sound doctrine, they don't want to live it. They want the end result. They want, their, they want their mate to be the right kind of person. They want their children to be the right kind of person. They want everybody else around them to treat them like Jesus would treat them, but they don't want to live it. I mean, if you want to live for Christ, you want to turn out a good, solid product of Christianity, you're going to have to put forth some effort. You're going to have to endure some things. It just won't happen on its own. Sorry, it's not that way. Christianity, you're going to have to endure some suffering. Look in verse 5. It says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Here Paul is writing to Timothy and he's telling him, so you're going to endure some afflictions. You get in the ministry and you're going to get afflicted by some things. Some of it will be your own thinking. You'll think you're not worthy. You'll think you could do a better job. You're thinking, man, I just want to stop this and run away. But yet, because God called you, you show up. And then when you show up and do the best that you can, it's never good enough for everybody. Do you understand that? Do you realize it doesn't matter how good a job you do, you're, you're never going to please everybody. See, and when you learn to be content, you're like, I'm doing what God wants me to do. I've done it to the best of my ability. If that's not good enough for somebody else, they need to find another church home. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be obnoxious or rude or anything like that. I'm just telling you what time in the ministry has taught me. People leave and they never, when they do leave, they never state the reason to you that they're leaving that's honest and truthful. They'll always talk to other people, but they'll never be honest. The real reason they left, they just wanted to. And they were looking for a reason. Just looking for a reason. Let's go to... Uh, uh, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're getting close to Philippians, okay? Ephesians in chapter 6. Ephesians in chapter 6. Look here in verse uh, 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. See, a lot of the reasons we don't endure afflictions and because when when it's for such a time as this that we fail or that we run from it, it's because we're trying to stand in our own strength. We're trying to do it our own way, in our own power, and it doesn't work that way. It says, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians in chapter 4. Now it starts out there with this word, therefore. So therefore, it's there for a reason, and it's because of what's happened in verses, in chapters 1 through 3. You have some division in this church. Some people are just trying to do things not necessarily sinful. They just don't have the same mind in the Lord. They, they want to serve God, but they're wanting to do it their way. It's all right if you want to serve God, but you better be doing it His way. Well, I think those are very scary words. I feel, oh, that's even scarier words. You understand that? When you say, well, I think, I feel we ought to just do it this way. Well, I think it ought to be done this way. Be very careful with that. How does God feel about that? What does God think about that? That would be a good question to ask. But here in verse uh, 1, look what Paul writes this. He says, therefore, my brethren, and how he describes them. And look how this shows up twice in this verse. He says, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. And look what he says here. So stand fast in the Lord. Well, that's very similar to what he wrote to the Ephesians, wasn't it? And then he says, my dearly beloved. He sincerely cares for these people. There's a deep bond that he has for these people. And when you think of Philippi, where did Philippi start? Well, out by the riverside. And then he was cast into jail. That's where the Philippian jailer was. Paul was put in jail for just preaching the gospel, for just doing what he was called to do. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He wasn't harming anybody. And that's how that church at Philippi got started. So Paul's got a lot invested in this work. But God's got a lot invested in him. 
And for such a time as this is why Paul was in jail. For such a time as this is why he's writing this to these people. And he's telling them, says, therefore, why don't you stand fast in the Lord? Because for such a time as this, you're going to have to go through something. So he just keeps on here. In verse 2 it says, I beseech you, Adias, and beseech Sintiki. That, and I'm probably not pronouncing these names right, but that's all right. They can correct me when I get to heaven. That they be of the same mind in the Lord. Here you have these two people. They're not doing wrong, but they need to have the same mind in the Lord. In verse 3, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, and I like this, whose names are in the book of life. Is your name in the book of life? Man, you, you ever get discouraged? You get down? You ought to rejoice about that. You want to rejoice? Think about that your name's written in the book of life. It's not in the, in the uh, uh, guest book in hell. There is no guest book in hell. Once you get in, you don't get out. But it ain't there. It's not going to be scrawled on the, on the stones in hell somewhere. John was here. No, indeed. Not me anyway. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. And look what verse 4 says then. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You'll rejoice all the time in the Lord as you remember. As you're going through suffering. As you're enduring things. As you're putting up with things. That other people, that, that lost people don't have to put up with. Saved people just have to put up with some more stuff. You just have to keep a few more rules. You just have to do a few more things than everybody else does. But it's all right because it's well worth it because my name's written in the Lamb's, Book, Lamb's Book of Life. And so with that, I can rejoice. So rejoice in the Lord. When? Well, just sometimes. No, that's where you get in trouble when you rejoice just sometimes. Yeah. You need to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Do you think that He's getting ready, getting these people ready for when the Lord's coming back? That was 2,000 years ago. Do you realize people have been reading this passage of Scripture for 2,000 years? Do you realize that we could all be wrong in our chronological uh, outlook of things and it could be another 2,000 years? I don't think so. I think we're just right where the Lord's at hand. He's ready to come back. Amen. That trumpet could sound at any time. But see, that's how we live for such a time as this. God can come back today. God can come back today. You're like, well, He didn't come back today, so tomorrow. No, He can come back tomorrow, but He'll be today when we think about it. Yeah. And you need to be rejoicing because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It doesn't matter if it's today. It doesn't matter if it's tomorrow. It doesn't matter if it's ten years from now. It doesn't matter if uh, Joe Biden gets elected two more times. I don't think that he's got that many years left in him. Okay? But it doesn't matter who gets elected president. We can rejoice in the Lord because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. So we have to endure some things. So there's some suffering that we have to go through. Yes, it will hurt. Yes, it will be a trial. Yes, it will be terrible. But yet we can rejoice. Because our name's written in the Lamb's book of life. And the Lord is at hand. Look in verse 6. Here's one. Here's a verse of encouragement. It's not just rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You're like, well, Pastor, how do I pray? And I'm, I'm really enduring something. I'm really going through something. How do I pray to God with thanksgiving? God, I'm thankful that you hear me. I don't know if you're going to answer this prayer. I don't know if you're going to answer it in the way that I would like to see you answer it. But I'm thankful that you hear my prayer. I'm thankful that you're God and I know you. I'm thankful that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See, now to bring some rejoicing on. To see, we're to be careful for nothing. Man, when you start enduring some stuff, it ought to cause you to pray more. Now, if you're enduring, it causes you to not pray. You're not walking with God. You're trying to do it in flesh. And you need to trust in God. 
And look in verse 7. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Where is another verse that will just stir you up, isn't it? Do you see how there's so many things? I believe these Philippians uh, were going through some stuff and Paul was really led of God to just throw out here a whole lot of encouragement for them because it's just lots of verses here that are dealing with encouragement. Your name's written in the, Lamb book, in the Lamb's book of life. Stand fast in the Lord. I know that book is there. I know my name is in it. I know nobody can take my name out of it. Amen. So I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I can pray about it. I know He's coming back. And I have this peace that comes from God. And the peace of God which passeth, passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mercy, that's pretty good, isn't it? You're like, well, how do I get that peace? It's, uh, it works in your heart and in your mind. What's, what's going to work in your heart and mind? The Word of God. You know what you're prone to do when you get in a battle? When you get in a spiritual battle? I'll mark my place there, but that's what you do. Yeah. You might even do this. But it ain't doing you no good like this. Yeah. You gotta have it opened up. Amen. And it doesn't it doesn't help you just to do this. You gotta do this. Amen. It's not that big of a change, is it? And how quickly, how quickly. You stop reading. How quickly. And it doesn't matter. You, you ought to, there's times you ought to read a lot of Scripture, but you ought to read it until you get something. Yeah. And you ought to ask God, God, I want something out of Your Word. I, I want to be strengthened from Your Word today. Now, you read one verse, well, God didn't give me nothing out of that verse. Yeah, Jesus wept. But you contemplate that verse. Now, why was He weeping? Because somebody went through a trial. Yeah. You don't stop just there. You keep reading. Let's keep going here. Look in verse 8. Finally, brethren. Here he's calling them brethren again. Man, here's Paul being led of God, just pouring his heart out here. God's trying to show you that there is help here in the body of Christ. There's help in the body of believers. Being a believer is different. He's not saying this is for everybody. He's saying this is for people that believe. This is not going to help a lost person. It's not going to encourage uh, a Satanist. But it will sure encourage a saved person. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise. Oh, big deal about all that stuff. No, that's what you're supposed to think on. What are you thinking on? What you think about does matter. Do you understand what you think about? You get worried. You get all bent out of shape. You, 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 what's going on in the world? You want to get all upset over that? No, there's some times you, you need to watch the news. You need to understand what's going on in your world. You need to hold your politicians and your leaders accountable for how they vote and wh how, what laws they pass and what they're trying to do. The church for too long has said nothing. Yep. And it didn't just happen in the last few years. But you can't get all caught up in that stuff to where that's all you're thinking because if that's all you're thinking is politics and all oh, the world's falling apart and all this is happening and all the riots and all the other stuff that's going on. Oh! No, no, no. You need to think on whatsoever's true, whatsoever is lovely. You need to pull some good into your life. Yeah. Yeah. You need to figure out that's how you're going to rejoice. That's how you're going to stand fast in the Lord. You're not going to stand fast in the Lord watching the news and watching YouTube about all the crazy stuff that's going on. You need to spend some time in the Bible. Verse 9 says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Wait a minute. Now this is Paul writing to Timothy. How did Timothy, how, how is Paul able to write this to Timothy? Because Timothy was around Paul. Paul was his spiritual leader. What, what kind of work were they doing together? Church work. Where do you get to be involved in church work? Right here. Paul wasn't a perfect example to Timothy, and I won't be a perfect example to you, but don't look for me. You look for the Lord. 
It says, in those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. There, that word peace is showing up again. So we're supposed to stand fast. We're supposed to rejoice in the Lord. We're supposed to be careful for nothing. We're supposed to uh, have all these things. And then there's that peace that comes from God. And that peace is knowing, hey, for such a time as this, but I can make it through it. It'll be all right. I'm, I'll, 2020, if the Lord tarries, will pass right into 2021. Never thought we'd make it to 2021. And I honestly hope the Lord comes back before then. I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to go home. But there's a lot of people that maybe aren't ready. And for such a time as this, that's why we stay here. That's why we have church. That's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we had our doors open today and some people that wouldn't normally come to church came to church. Look at verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again wherein ye were also careful but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. Here's, here's a great secret for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. You need to be learn to be content. That's not only in your finances. That's not only in where you are uh, uh, financially, where you're living, what job you're in, and things like that. You need to learn to be content with what God's given you. Yeah. See, a lot of times we want God to make us real spiritual so that we can just enjoy this Christian life more. Now, why don't you learn to be content with how much spirituality God has given you? Like, well, pastor, don't, shouldn't I be doing more? Certainly, all of us should be. But you get caught up in what you should be doing more, and you're not thinking about what you already have. And you squander that moment that you're living in because you're waiting to get better. You're waiting to do this. You're waiting to grow up. You're waiting to finish Bible college. Robert doesn't need to finish Bible college to serve. Anna doesn't need to go to Bible college to serve. She's serving now. You understand that? Now, if they have the opportunity, should they go? Should they do the best that they can? Should they learn everything that they can? Certainly. They can learn to be content. If God's given me this ability, God's given me this amount of talent, I'm going to use it. Most people don't use what they already have. Do you understand that? It's like a, we, how many times do we see a penny and we'll never reach down and pick it up? But it only takes doing that a hundred times and you got a dollar. I guarantee if there was a dollar on the floor, you'd reach down and pick it up. Wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't. I'd be dirty. Okay, well tell me where you saw it. I'll go get it. Amen. Do you understand that? Oh, I won't pick up a penny. See, you're not content with the penny. And you'll never get the dollar. Let's keep going. Verse 12. <clears throat> Paul says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. You know what one of the greatest things that will do to make you a better spiritual uh, uh, person? It's when you realize that you have needs spiritually. You're not as good a Christian as what you think you are. I'm not. You might be a better Christian than me. I don't think I'm a very good one. I think I need to work at it. I think I make lots of mistakes. You're like, well, Pastor, what mistakes are you making? Ones that you can't see on the outside. Ones that are on the inside. And there's some, my family, they know things that you don't know. And they'll just keep that to themselves. And I know things about them. And we'll just keep that to ourselves. You understand that? But your greatest needs are not what everybody else sees. It's what you would see if you were honest with yourself. Look at verse 13. You ever heard this verse before? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Man, here, rejoice in the Lord always. Think on these things. Be careful for nothing. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do you see how much has just been 
packed into this chapter. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There's another verse that just ought to stir you up. Who's going to supply your needs? God. And it's all His riches. What's His greatest riches? It's not the gold, is it? Because that's what pavement is in heaven. Gold is who He is. or not. Gold's not who He is. The greatest riches are who He is and His glory. And when we realize that, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That ought to cause you to rejoice. Man! And you realize, well, look how rich I am. Because look around the world sometime. Watch your YouTube. Watch your uh, news channels. They never mention God. They don't know God. And look what they're trying to do. They're trying to live for themselves. And you get to live for Him. See, and that's how you're going to be able to suffer. And you're going to be able to endure that suffering. And that's how for such a time as this, that you're able to make it through there. Because you know what God has is so much better than what the world would ever have. Verse 20. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. Jesus, the brethren which are with me greet you. All saints salute you. Chiefly they that are of Caesar's household, man, even people around the politicians can rejoice in God and be happy about the things of God. Yeah. Salvation makes a difference. Yeah. When you see people that are depressed and discouraged and despondent, you mark it down. They don't know who Jesus is. Right. Then why do you act like them? And why do you act like them? It's good. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with those that are spiritual among you. Amen. That's not what it says, is it? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you spiritual giants. Mm -mm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with just those that rejoice always. That's not what it says either. Who's the grace of God for? All. All. You ever get to the place to where you doubt? You ever get to the place where it seems like it's just the end and it's all terrible? The grace of God's available to you. Now it's time for us to stop belly aching. It's time for us to start enduring because it's for such a time as this. We get to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in June of 2020. Of all the people through all the ages, we're the ones. We're the ones. No, we're, we're, we're not seeing the Red Seas party. No, we're not seeing fire come down. But we know that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See, Jesus even told the apostles, He said, don't you rejoice because you can cast out devils. He said, you rejoice. Why? Because you're saved. Because your names are written down in heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.